everyone, it's me, Katie Beth again. And today I am doing another 3D printing video. I thought I'd try out the Mystic Mugs. Uh, super cool. Uh, this one is just a normal one. And you can also make them blank so it doesn't have a lion on. Uh, the guy that makes the Mystic Mugs, he has a ton of other designs. I'm just trying out the free ones. But I had a ton of trouble getting these to work. And they're one of the first things I tried printing with my 3D printer. So I didn't know if my 3D printer was just broken or if the file was poop. But I kept looking at other people's mugs that they had printed this exact same mug and it came out perfectly for them. And it took me this many failed mugs. So let's see, we got one, two, three, four, five. So it took me at least six failed mugs to figure out what I was doing wrong. So I thought I'd just share this with you in case any of you are also having this problem. So one of the first problems I was having was that my 3D printer uh, would print this one pretty well. It's still kind of a bad print, but it would print it pretty well. But when it would get to the handle, it would just knock into it and knock the handle off or it would yank it and then pull the whole thing off so it just spin around and not print and I just have a bunch of half printed prints because of that. So it took forever to figure out what was happening. So the first thing I was failing at was I didn't know that you could use a Z-Hop. So I had to go into my settings and figure out how to put a Z-Hop in. And that actually helped out a lot. The next problem I was having is that the one side of it was printi printing pretty well while the other side was just torn up. So I thought maybe it was the way I had it facing on my printer, like maybe if I moved it around then it would even out. But when I did that it just made this side good and this side bad. I don't seem to have one of those copies with me right now. So what ended up being the issue with that part was that I had my spool of filament outside of the case and so it was just taking too much effort to pull it and when my and when my printer would get to this side of the cup because it was further away is where it would have to pull the filament so it was stretching to pull the filament on this side so that's why it was like uh, stretched and then this side was great because then it would move back over here where it wasn't stretched at all and print fine. And then it would stretch over here and then go back over here to where it wasn't stretched and print fine. So I fixed that by putting my filament spool inside the case and it just had a lot less resistance on pulling. So I was able to bring that down a lot and it's printing pretty evenly now. The next thing I tried out with the cups because if you're printing these, they do take a really long time to print. Uh, so I tried out doing a fast print, a normal quality print, and a quality quality print. And th for this trial, I did use the Cura settings. And Cura, at least when I downloaded it, doesn't have a setting for Snapmaker. So you either have to make your own or download somebody else's. 
and I actually went on YouTube and found someone else that had already uploaded Snapmaker profiles, and I downloaded his and used his settings. So using Cura, which is pretty much always faster than my Snapmaker, I went ahead and tried those. So this is the quality setting. It's pretty nice. And then this is the normal quality. So this was high quality is what I mean. This one was normal quality. It's not too much different. You can kind of see in the lion's beard. This one's still a little nicer. This one still has a little more, the layers are more pronounced in his beard. But not a huge difference other than that. And then the fast quality, there is a pretty big difference. Like it's not, the layers are not laid down as nicely. And also with the fast quality, it didn't even finish to the top. So I guess it just finished doing this and then it just didn't feel like it needed to finish the top of this mug. And you can also see the bottom difference. Let me just show you the high quality versus fast quality. So if you're just making a prototype for yourself, the fast quality, it's not too bad. Uh, again, it didn't finish itself, so that's kind of poopy. But just checking it out, not too bad. And it took less than a day to make this one. Whereas this one takes like two days, I think, on Cura. And on my Snapmaker for a normal quality that's pretty much the same as the high quality for the Cura. Uh, for my Snapmaker, it took three days. The other thing that I've started doing also is printing supports. And so this one I did make with my Snapmaker profile, normal quality, which came out the same as the high quality for the Cura. Let's see, where is it? Here it is. Came out with pretty similar qualities. And this was just a normal quality, but again, it did take longer. Like I'm pretty sure the high quality for the Cura took like two days. It took three days to make the Snapmaker one, but it's very nice. I'm wondering how much better it would have been if I did the high quality, but three days for normal quality. I didn't feel like waiting another however many long days it would take to make the other one. The problems I had with this, which is why I ended up painting it, is that I did use supports. I started using supports on things just because uh, I have a lot less failing rate if I use supports. But the supports got stuck on his eye. Like this side of his face just looked weird and then I thought I could fix it using acetone, like melting it down. But it made, because the plastic is so shiny, it made the, the plastic like dull and milky washed, I guess. It just wasn't as nice. So I decided to go over it and just paint it. And then over the paint, I put a polyurethane, polyurethane, polyurethane. I can't say the word, but I put a, a paint gloss over it, put a few layers on there, just so it'll be a little nicer for hand gripping. It won't just peel the paint right off. And another weird thing I did, I guess it's not that weird. Uh, the top was a little not as nice. Let me see if I can find it on the other ones. See, the tops are like, you can kind of see the layers. And I didn't want those layers to be as pronounced. So I took a hot iron and some parchment paper and flattened it down. But because of that, I kind of pushed the lip down more. So it does make the lids a little harder to screw on now and unscrew. Well, now it seems to be working fine, but it was a little more of an issue earlier. So one of the cool things with using the Mystic mugs is that the guy also put so much effort into making these, to designing them, that he also made all these little inserts. Like this one's for a soda can, because they're really designed for a monster can to fit in there. Because it's 3D printing, you don't want to put actual liquid in there because there's all these layers in there and germs can just get stuck in there and really hard to wash out. So the idea is you want to still use your cans and he made all these different inserts. So this one is actually for like a soda can. Let me see if we have a soda can. So just put 
a soda right in there so it fits like the same kind of size as a monster. Or if say you don't like how low the monster is in there, you can use the little 16 ounce step and just put it right in there so it brings it higher for your mouth to go on, I guess. So here's an insert for Red Bull. And so you can still like drink your Red Bull this way. But it keeps it pretty tight in there. So if you're drinking until you get to that point of falling out, it stays in there pretty well. And then in case you don't have the brand name Red Bulls, he also made one that's for 12 ounces for like the generic Red Bulls. Red Thunder that I got from Aldi. So as you can see, the generic is too big to fit in the Red Bull one. But it fits in the 12 ouncer. It fits in there pretty well. Keeps it pretty snug. Snugger than if it was just by itself rolling around. Because then it would be like this. I also brought a oh, bottle of water fits in there just fine too. <laughs> I'm actually kind of super excited about this because I live off of water. I guess everyone does. But pretty excited about this. So probably bottles of soda would fit in there just fine too. And I think he also made one for a bottle of beer to fit in there fine. But I don't have that insert made quite yet. But you get the idea. Here's another thing to watch out. If you don't use a high enough quality, uh, like this one, it's the one I made without the lion but I used it on a fast quality and I don't know if you can see that well, there's like skips in it. It's not, it's hard to see on camera. Oh, one of the things too with the Z hop, it makes all these little hairs, but you can pull the hairs off, but it's better to have these little hairs than to have the handle completely ripped off. So you can see, tell me if you can see this on camera, but it's just a really, like, holes in it. Like, it didn't print that well compared to So there's kind of a big difference on the print quality here. So fast quality, higher quality. All right, so that's my quickly documented experience with using Mystic Mugs, which I really love. Uh, the Lion in the Blank blank Mug. He does let you have for free to try out. And now I just need to buy some more cool ones because, because he has a lot more mugs other than these, and they're super cool. Those ones you do have to pay for, though. But they're really awesome, and he put a lot of work into these, so I'm willing to do that. So if you wanted to find his stuff, just search Mystic Mugs and it comes up everywhere. I'll try and put a link down below. So things I'm going to put in the link below. Hopefully a link to Mystic Mugs so you can find his mugs. And two, there was, some, there was something else I was going to put in there. Oh, I do remember. The second thing I was going to put in there, I'm going to try and find that guy that uh, I got the settings for Kira for Snapmaker on there. So you can look up his video and find out just how to get your snap maker working with Cura. There's other ways, I'm sure of it, just because me, I have absolutely no experience other than me just buying my snap maker and trying from there. If you know how to make your own profiles, that's perfectly fine, but I'll try and link his video that helped me a lot to help you on your journey. Well, thanks for watching everyone. Uh, it's almost Father's Day, so I'm gonna try and get these in the mail real quick. Uh, this is the Father's Day gift I'm giving out this year. To my new stepdad and to Jason's dad. I wasn't sure if they'd like them painted or not painted more, so I just painted one and didn't paint the other and let Jason pick out which one he wanted to give. Well, thanks for watching, everyone. Don't forget to like and subscribe at the bottom for uh, more videos in the future. Thanks for watching, everyone, and have a great rest of your day. My printer finally finished a project from start to finish that's more than like an inch high. 
I'm super excited about it. It's not perfect. Let's see. Still lots of things wrong with it. Like I think I had the temperature too high here, so that's why it's melted looking. But for a fast print and fast being 13 hours, 14 hours, um, not too bad. Pretty excited that something finally worked on it. What seemed to be the big problem was that Snapmaker didn't have a Z-hop on, but once I was able to get a Z-hop on it, it was able to complete a project completely.